Now, the best thing about this box is you only need one single sheet of plywood. And for this, I picked up a four foot by eight foot sheet of three quarter inch radiata pine plywood. Now, you probably already know that our Honda Civic can't hold a full sheet of plywood, but we were able to get everything cut down into some oversized panels at the home center. Now, you won't need that entire sheet though, so you can keep that extra scrap piece for a project to do in the future. The only thing more inaccurate than news from people on Facebook are the cuts made by the employees at Home Depot. So, I brought these panels down to their proper dimensions on the table saw. Now watching me cut up a ton of pieces of plywood probably isn't really helpful, so let's jump into SketchUp so you can actually follow what I'm going to be building. So here's a sketch of the box. I color coded all of the different size panels to make things a little bit easier to figure out. There are a total of seven panels. Yes, it's a six sided box, but think about it for a second. Where is that last panel? This isn't a trick question. Yeah. It's on the inside for some extra support. Now, if you were to unfold the box and lay out all these pieces of plywood onto a single sheet, you can see where I got all those strips cut down from the home center. And we've got full step-by-step -step plans with color-coded detailed drawings of everything you need to build this box down in the description below, as well as the SketchUp file. So check it out if that's something you're interested in. Now that you understand where all these pieces are coming from, let's jump back into the garage and see how things are going. Now, like I said before, we had all those panels cut down to some oversized pieces, and I'm just basically bringing them down to their final dimensions here. But with all those final dimensions dialed in, we need to start cross-cutting them to their final length. Now, I prefer to use our DIY cross-cut sled since we can set up a stop block to make sure that all of our cuts are repeated and perfectly accurate, but you can also just use a circular saw, no problem. The only real tip I want to give you is to only move your stop block after all the cuts to a specific dimension are finished. And what I mean here is don't make a 15 inch cut, then an 18 inch cut, and then try to go back to 15 inches. The likelihood of you going back and hitting the exact same measurement is super, super low. Well, at least for me it is. So just plan out all of your cuts, which we already did for you in the plans that we've got linked below. With all of the pieces cut down, the only slightly difficult part about this project is to make a cutout to act as a handle on the two side pieces. Now you could absolutely use just a jigsaw to cut it out, but I really want these to be really clean for our client, so I'm gonna use a router here. What you're seeing me do here is kind of make a template. I basically stuck down some scrap pieces to make a guide fence for my router. If you haven't seen this trick before, I basically cover each piece with painter's tape and then put down a few dabs of super glue, and I can just press the two together. Now the super glue will set up pretty fast, but it gives me enough time to adjust it so that the router bit is lined up perfectly to the mark that I want to cut. This process does take a little time since I don't want to cut any deeper than about 1 8 of an inch on each pass. So while I finish routing out the handle, I want to thank you for checking out our channel. And if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate you clicking that thumbs up button. As always, no pressure, but if you want to help us grow, that really helps a lot. Thanks. With the handle cut out, you can see how these scraps were held down. They're on there pretty good with the painter's tape. However, it doesn't mess up the surface of the plywood one bit. Oh yeah, and to dress things up, I threw on a round over bit on the router to get a nice soft feel on the handles. You know, details, people. Now it's really all about putting all the pieces together. Now, there is a specific way that will make the pieces fit together better and the process a little easier, so make sure to follow the process that we have outlined in the plans here. I'll start out by attaching the front and side pieces together, and I'm using these Rockler squares to help hold all the pieces at a perfect 90 degree angle after I spread some glue and then pre-drill some countersunk holes before attaching the panels together with some inch and a half screws. And once the front and then two sides are attached, the next piece to put on is the bottom panel. 
And while I attach the bottom panel, I want to remind you to check us out over on Patreon if you want to support the show. We've got tons of cool rewards over there that we think you're going to love. So see if it's right for you, but remember, no pressure. After popping on the back panel, the next panel that I need to put in is the interior support. Now, depending on how accurate your cuts were, you might actually need to trim this piece down. So I'd suggest waiting to bring this piece down to its final size once you get to this step if you aren't completely confident on your precision. And here's a clip that I'm sending to try to get a job on a NASCAR pit crew. Haven't heard anything back, but I'll let you know. The very last panel that we need to place on is the top. Now this one might require a little bit of persuasion to get in place, but as long as everything was assembled squarely, you should be good to go. Oh, I also sent this video out to get that NASCAR job, but I think that they saw that I choke under pressure. And no one wants bloody shins, so I rounded over all the edges with the sander and then this bad boy was finished. Well, technically it's not finished, but the project is complete. I didn't want to add any finish or anything that could possibly make this slippery during a workout, so I just left it nice bare wood. 